Howdy folks, Fast Wheels here. Yeah, I'm long overdue for doing an update, and I'm deciding to do something a little bit different. Uh, the last two updates, well, one of them I was stoned out of my mind to the hospital, and the other one was prior to surgery. And, yeah, I just, I didn't really like them too much. You know, just show my ugly mug. So, this time I'm showing video of my goals for post-operatively. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, my surgery was a lumbar fusion from L4 to S1 and a double SI joint fusion. Um, with the lumbar fusion, they removed two discs, put in a couple of cages between the vertebrae to fuse them together, as well as, I think it's eight screws and two bars, and then with, and for that they did an incision from probably about an inch below the top of the butt crack all, all the way up to the length of the lumbar spine. And they also did incisions on either side of my hip, uh, probably about four inches long, so they could fit the two screws on either side to fuse my SI joints. Um, yeah, my goals are to race in the Detroit Free Press Marathon with the Achilles Freedom Team in 20, October of 2025 and get a qualifying time to race the Boston Marathon again and compete in that in 2026. Now the re recovery time for the surgery they say is 6 to 12 months and my goal is to be recovered within 3 to 6 months and that is a very lofty goal but it's something to go for. Uh, surgery was on the 27th of August. Yes, 27th of August. Uh, I had to report to the VA at 10 a.m. for the surgery and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, got there, they were running behind. Uh, so I, I don't remember how, how long I ended up having to wear. I think it was like about another extra hour. Uh, they, no, actually almost two hours. They got me in just before noontime. Uh... You know, do the usual stuff, clean, you know, stripping down, getting into the stupid little hospital, Johnny, uh, going over what they're going to do with me. Uh, they rolled me, once they rolled me into uh, the operating room, that's where they put me under sedation. Uh, once under sedation, they put a second IV in, in my left wrist which actually, instead of going into a vein, it went into the artery. That was so they could monitor things more closely. Um, they also intubated me. When they intubated me, they didn't really do the best job in the world. They, uh, it's the device they use to put the tube down your throat is called a um, laryngoscope. And when they put that in, they didn't, clear of my lips. They did the procedure wrong, apparently, because they totally shredded my upper lip and a little bit of the lower lip. How they shredded the lower lip, I don't know. Uh, when I was in recovery, my mouth was covered with blood. I, actually, the whole lower half of my face was covered in blood, and they had to clean it all off. It was kind of gross. Uh, got into recovery room, uh, definitely groggy, uh, dry throat from being intubated, kind of sore. So lots of ice chips. Uh, eventually I ended up um, vomiting a little bit. Just, you know, reaction to all the medications, normal stuff. Uh, about 10.30 at, that night, they got me into the room I was going to be staying in, in the hospital, in, in the ward. And I probably did, didn't get that there. Yeah get my tongue untied here. They brought me some food that had, you know, very, it was hours cooling off. They reheated it. And as long as it had been since I'd eaten, it was the most delicious meal I ever had, <laughs> which, you know, hospital food, ick. Uh, as with always, I don't sleep well after surgery or any kind of, any time I've been sedated. Uh, so I was up all night long. Uh, couldn't get out of bed, so in order to pee, they had a urinal for me. And because of the SI joint fusion, I wasn't able to spread my legs wide enough for the urinal. 
So that was kind of messy. And the next day, physical therapy and occupational therapy showed up, and that's and we started right off the bat, you know, getting up out of the bed, how to how to get out of the bed, how to get myself to my uh, rollator, or excuse me, up roller, and how to move around. Uh, they wanted me to transfer to a recliner beside the bed, but I couldn't manage that. Didn't do that till the second day. Uh, one thing about being under sedation and all in narcotics is it plugs you up. And because of that, they give you uh, stuff to help you poop, uh, laxatives, excuse me. And I think it was a couple of days later, my, you know, that whole, this whole time is kind of foggy to me. Uh, nursing staff really sucked at this point. And when it was finally time for me to poop, the nurse comes in and she tells me to just roll over onto my side and poop in the bed, which was really, really, really nasty. Uh, after that, it took forever for them to answer the call to come and clean things up. And laying on my side was extremely painful and just, it was a horrible experience. Uh, when they did come and clean me up, they didn't do a very good job. That evening, uh, the most amazing nurse I've ever had came in and she answered the, the nurse call button really quick. She came in, she changed my sheets and my Johnny again, she cleaned me up really good. And she just kept coming in, constantly coming in, checking on me. And she was just fantastic. Uh, four days later, on a Saturday, I got out of the hospital. A friend of mine had to come pick me up. And it was taking forever for me to get out. Uh, I am a type 2 diabetic. And when you're in the hospital, they don't let you have your metformin, your Jardians, uh, my long-lasting insulin. You know, all that good stuff. Plus, I'm just sitting on my butt doing nothing. My blood sugar started going through the roof. And I had to skip lunch on Saturday. And even still, just constantly waiting, waiting, waiting. And I finally got my blood sugar into the 200s. I think it was like 280-something or other, at where they would allow me to be discharged. Um, the ride home was rough. It was extremely painful getting into the wheelchair. Uh, every time there was just the tiniest bump, it hurt. But got home without much of a problem, got into the house, and got myself put into my recliner. And that's basically where I lived for the next two days. Uh, I was using the urinal a little bit, uh, also able to get up and go into the bathroom that was in the bedroom. Um, eventually, it just got too painful sitting in the recliner, so I took the chance of getting into the bed, and that was a big help. And, you know, things just started progressing more and more since. Uh, a couple days after getting home, physical therapy and occupational therapy started showing up, and the home health care nurse had started making goals. And, you know, the goals at first were simple to be able to get out, get onto the toilet and to be able to get up and move around in the house. Uh, an up roller, that, which is what I have, is extremely supportive and I can use vast majority upper body strength to hold my weight and just swing my legs to move around. Um, it's a very interesting device. Google up roller and you'll get an idea of it. Um, at this point, I'm at... Um, at a point with my rehab where I'm capable with the up roller of walking around in the house 0.15 miles. And I've got this little thing. It's, it's basically a uh, stationary bicycle, but it's really small and it's designed for, to be under somebody's desk. Uh, I put that up on top of a table and I'm pedaling for about 15 minutes. And yesterday, I got myself into my exercise room where my hand cycle is sitting. And, you know, I was just curious as to, you know, to get an idea how to get down into it and then how to get back up. And I straddled the hand cycle and got my hands on the rear wheels. And I came so close to just letting myself slide on down. 
but better judgment took over and I chose not to. Uh, getting down into the hand cycle has never been a problem. I can't foresee it as being a problem. My fear is getting back up off the ground afterwards. I haven't tried that yet. I've tried different things on the bed, which I find is a safe space to try different stuff. And I really honestly haven't figured out how to move myself from the floor back up to either a wheelchair or the up roller. Um, with my legs and my back, uh, I'm still feeling a lot of pain where they put the screws in and, you know, the areas around the surgery. Uh, I'm also feeling nerve pain, uh, the sciatic nerve on both legs. And on the left leg, I'm also feeling pain with the femoral nerve. Uh, the femoral nerve goes from your crotch down the inside of the leg. When I try and put weight on my legs, and my left leg, it historically had been my good leg, the right leg, the bad one. As soon as I put all my weight on either leg, it's like an electric shock shooting, down, shooting up and down the leg and complete muscle failure, and I begin to fall. I am doing it safely. I'm doing it while on the up roller, and that way I'm able to catch myself before I fall. Um, this is something that the doctors find concerning. Uh, also the physical therapists find concerning. They don't know if there is extra damage in there caused by the surgery or if it's swelling causing issues. Time will tell. Uh, I have to ice my back down for about a half an hour, three times, three, four times a day. I honestly don't feel that there is any swelling back there anymore, but you know, I'm not a doctor. I can't tell, to be honest with you. Now, my short-term goals here for the next week or so is to get myself into the hand cycle and to be able to start pedaling it. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this with the top end uh, hand cycle. There's a gap between the backrest and where your butt goes. I need to do something to kind of make it even, find something to add as like a space or so it's a flat level surface. Um, I don't plan on pushing myself more than about 30 or 40 watts. How long I'll be able to stay on there, it's going to depend on pain. I know physically, as far as my upper body goes, I can handle, you know, same amount of time, power wattage as, as always. It's just... I have to be careful of the back, uh, the back pain. I don't want to damage the hardware that's in there because the bone technically is not healed yet. How, long, how much longer that's going to take, I don't know. I have a follow-up appointment in the beginning of October, and we'll see where things are. As of yet, I'm still not allowed to drive. Uh, for me personally, I wouldn't drive whether the doctor says I can or not because I'm still on narcotics. And even if I'm feeling... Like I'm myself, if I'm feeling like I'm alert to everything, I'm still on narcotics and any kind of narcotic or alcohol does impair your abilities. So it is always a bad idea to try and drive when you're under the influence of anything. And with all my years as a firefighter, there's no way in hell I'm going to do something that's going to potentially injure other people. It's just very reckless to do. Uh, as a result of that, I am the only person in the house who can drive. Um, one is afraid of driving my truck. The other one is just afraid of driving, period. And I've been dependent on friends and Uber uh, to get to my different appointments. Been dependent on um, different uh, food delivery apps. Uh, I've got a subscription to Walmart Plus, so they you know, deliver the groceries to the house, and that doesn't cost me anything to, for the delivery charges. And, you know, it's it's been a benefit. Uh, other positives, I've had quite a few friends who have been calling and texting, and, you know, just hearing from people, you know, knowing that people actually give a damn about me, that's really, really good. It does a whole lot for my morale. Uh, it also helps to distract me from pain that I'm in. And it's just, you know, I really do 
enjoy that. Yeah, I mean, it's I grant I've got family here in the house, but it is so lonely not having anybody else to talk with or you know anything else like that. It's just it's nice to hear another voice or to chat with people via text. Uh, I've got one friend who sang me a song <laughs> and sent it to me uh, as a video. Uh, I've got another friend who has called me a couple of times and we talk for an hour or two. Uh, you know, plus, you know, random texting. I've got friends who all of a sudden they'll just out of the blue send me a, a joke for a text. You know, there's so much going on. Uh, the woman who runs things for the Freedom Team with Achilles, Janet Patton, she has been sending me all kinds of inspirational messages and you know lots lots of support there uh, I can't thank Achilles International enough they've really been helpful uh, Operation Comfort has been helpful with various folks staying in touch with me uh, helping me out with rides extremely thankful to uh, the people with Pedal Guerrero Joe and Amy Leon um, Amy is the one who gave me a ride to the hospital initially to go in and get the surgery. And they've been very supportive with texts and texts and whatnot. Um, as I said, my short-term goal here is to get back on the hand cycle. Uh, I'm hoping that within the next couple of weeks here, I won't need to be taking the pain medication and be able to drive again. Um, Looking forward to my follow-up appointment with the doctor. Uh, it's voting time, and next month I plan on getting into early voting and getting it over and done with. Uh, get out and vote. If you don't vote, you can't really complain about things that are going on. That's my little quick little blurb about voting. Um, and, you know, like I said, driving, riding, uh Midterm goals is to actually be able to get outside on the trails to ride. And, you know, like I said, by October of 2025, racing in the Detroit Free Press Marathon. Um, hopefully in December of 2020, or excuse me, January of 2026, racing the Disney Half, uh, maybe the Houston Marathon, and then in April of 2026, the Boston Marathon. But I appreciate all y'all's support. Uh, it definitely does help. Uh, I really do enjoy the fact that you guys are following me along my journey. And there will be more to come. I hope to have lots of positive stuff for you. And hope to give you a little bit of inspiration. And help you to know that no matter how bad things get, there's always a way out. Take care. Please like and subscribe. And enjoy.